Welcome to the Torpreneur Podcast. Travel industry veteran Shane Whaley will take you on a journey with fellow torpreneurs, sharing their tips, ideas, insights, and success stories to inspire you to make your tour business the best it can be. And now, here is your host, Shane Whaley. Hello and welcome to the Tourpreneur Podcast, where we flatten the learning curve for tour operators around the world. Today, we're going to be talking reservation technology. With many of us at home, we're actually getting onto our to-do lists. Some tasks that have been there for months and others that have been there for years. And one of the most popular questions I am getting right now from you is about booking technology. Because finally, we have time to sit down and shop around and see what's out there that might be a better system than what you're using right now. Or maybe right now you're using pen and paper and the telephone and you're not taking any bookings. So I'm bringing you this Arrival Online Workshop that was hosted by Christian Watts at Magpie Travel and Todd Kersey at iOutdoor Adventures. Now, Christian runs this workshop at every arrival. And I'm always frustrated because I've never been able to make it. I've always been double booked. So it was a pleasure to actually edit this one for you and actually get to listen to the workshop because I always hear rave reviews about this one from arrival attendees. Um, They say that there's been so much new technology coming into our sector. What system should you choose? What features do you need? Which pricing model is right for you? This workshop will help you build a plan for evaluating and implementing a technology platform to manage your tours and activities and you'll run your business more efficiently This is for tour activity and attraction operators considering new reservation technology. So let me me share with you that you have to remember with these audios, they're a webinar. This is not the grand arrival production that they put on at their events with fantastic audio technology. Um, This is not the traditional podcast where I use my technology. So the audio is a little bit reverby in parts, but stick with it. I've, I've worked my magic on it the best I can do. And in this day and age of COVID, you've only got to look at the TV to see presenters from home. Um, Radio reporters are taking mics into their closets and recording their uh, their reports. So we are in a different world. So it's worth sticking with because there's some really good information on this. Tomorrow, I'll bring you another reservation technology uh, session. It was a roundtable that Arrival recently hosted with some res tech companies. And on Sunday, I'm launching the What I Learned This Week Uh, which is kind of my journal. It'll be short. I'm going to share with you each week what I've learned during the week from all the various webinars, news reports, interviews, articles, blogs, and podcast interviews that I listen to. So stay tuned for that one. As always, you can find the show notes today because there is a presentation you can download, and that's at tourpreneur.com forward slash arrival online. Welcome, everybody, to another session of Arrival Online. Uh, My name is Alex Kramer. I'm one of the co-founders here at Arrival. And I'm excited to have you guys all join us for this uh, workshop on refreshing your tech. Now's the time. So today's session um, is a little bit interesting for most people. We've gotten a couple of questions already, like, why should I, as an operator, be thinking about choosing or refreshing my technology stack right now. Um, you know, I've got obviously considering uh, considering current times, we've all got a lot of things on our mind as operators. What could we be? Uh, what, why is this important right now? And really, one of the main reasons is um, obviously since business is down for everybody, now is a really good time to start thinking about changing or adopting uh, changing your technology stack or adopting new technology. And so um, when there's no customers, obviously, you know, as I said, there's, there's a lot of things to think about, but, um, you know, without any business going on, you've got a lot of time to think about and adopt new technology. For those of you that have already um, made a switch of your technology system um, while business has been going good, you know that sometimes uh, they can feel like open heart surgery, changing your technology system. So um, it, we'll, we'll, we're going to hear uh, today from two uh, industry veterans that are uh, uh, have been through the process of, of uh, evaluating and uh, adopting technology systems. So I'd like to welcome Todd Kersey, the co-founder and CEO of iOutdoor, and Christian Watts, uh, the co-founder and CEO of Magby Travel. Uh, welcome to you, gentlemen. Hi, everyone. Hi, guys. 
So um, as usual in our Arrival Online webinars, um, if you have a question, you can use the Q&A functionality at the top of your screen there. If you click on Q&A, you can ask a question and we will be uh, monitoring those and asking them um, when we can. Um, and uh, also you can ask questions um, via Twitter um, by using the hashtag Arrival Online. We'll be monitoring that as well. Um, and if you have any questions, we'll, we'll put them in here. So um, beyond that, the only other thing I have before I uh, hand it over to Todd and Christian is um, I want to sincerely thank our global partners and sponsors without whom we couldn't be doing this. Um, so um, you're going to hear probably about some of the company names that, you'll, that you're seeing on screen today. So um, please uh, support those companies if you can. Beyond that, um, I'd like to hand it over to Christian and uh, we'll take it from there. All right. Thank you, Alex. Um, hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever it is in the world. Uh, my name is Christian Watts. I'm the CEO and founder of uh, Magpie Travel. Currently, it's a content management platform for tours and activities operators. Um, I'm also a, an operator myself. I've been operating the Skyline and previously city sightseeing hop on up off buses in San Francisco, which um, I had my 23-year work anniversary last year right in the middle of the shutdown. <laughs> as I noticed on LinkedIn. So happy to be here. And um, over to Todd. Yeah, I uh, run a big outdoor company. We're in the Southeast United States. Um, I outdoors, Bass Online. We have several brands. Um, tech is my world. Uh, we've got about 240 live websites. Uh, we've uploaded um, at least five, if not six, booking software. So we've got a lot of experience and uh, failure. So um, it's really good, and uh, I hope to be able to share some of that with you. Cool. So just just to be clear, if, if you, any of you guys want to disappear, this is not which booking platform to choose. It's how to choose your tech. So we get through most of this presentation without actually using names. And the, There are about 150 companies out there that we, we classify in this space. But we're not going to point to which one. You're not going to end up in the last slide with this is the one you should choose. Yeah. It's about the process that you go through to choose your book in tech. So um, this is me and Todd. As you can see, Todd's got a – I actually have to squeeze Todd's photo <laughs> a little bit there. So that fish is actually bigger in real life than it, <laughs> than it is. So – my history, I've, I've been in this, in this, like I say, a long time. I, I love technology. I used to write my own programs. This I'm very proud of this. This is one I wrote myself. This was our original res tech platform that we used back in 2002. Not the best looking today, but it worked. Um, we did that for about eight or nine years. And then I hired a developer in-house who built our next version of it. Because up back in 2009, there also weren't solutions available. And then this is the solution we're using today, which is a brand new state of the art um, from one of these res tech providers. So things have come a long way in the last 20 years. It's really a great time for technology because there are so many options out there. So one thing that people think in technology is that choices are going to get easier, companies are going to consolidate. And if you just wait a little bit longer, you'll have the perfect solution. So just as an example of that, this is the environment, this is just for marketing technology. So this is general marketing. And these were a few of the logos around in 2014. So potentially you could have been using any one of these companies to run part of your marketing. So a couple of years later, this is the same slide. It's actually five years later and there's about six times more companies on that slide. So unfortunately things actually don't get easier. I live in San Francisco, I live near San Francisco and there's a new startup popping up every day. You go for a coffee in the morning, there's two people sitting there discussing the next startup. So these companies keep on coming, they get more specialized. It's not going to get easier. So how do you go about choosing when there's this many companies to choose from? You could do demos every day for the next five years, and you'd probably get a good demo and a good sales pitch, and you could find good reason for using a lot of these solutions. But fortunately, the last couple of years, this is what's happened. We've had... The rise of the res tech. So what we refer to the res techs, they're, they're also called booking platform. They're called reservation systems. There's a lot of different words for them, but most of them are doing a similar function. And that's the square here in the middle. So a lot of you guys will recognize a lot of these, um, some of these are, are sponsors of Arrival. There's about 150 companies that are only around 
for you guys. If you're a tone activity provider and experiences provider, these guys provide solutions specifically for you. So they're not going to solve all of your tech problems. They're many that they're they're for your operational problems and they're for your marketing and for your distribution. This is um, the, the the important thing is when you come into this, you, you don't expect one of these guys, one of these companies to to solve everything in one fell swoop. You're still going to need communications internally with something like Slack. You're still going to need a payment processor like Stripe or Trust My Travel. You still might need a waiver. You still need accounting software always with something like QuickBooks. Um, HubSpot is a CRM, Salesforce. You, you still have other, other pieces of software you know, use, but we think these will solve about 80 to 90% of your software needs on a day-to-day -day basis. So whether you already have one of these or whether you're looking to switch because you're not happy or because something changed in your operation, because the, the really important thing is that when you go about changing or, or picking one is that you go through a correct process. So don't worry about that. We're not going to go through all of these. I think Todd might pick a couple out. This would take us hours to go through all of these features. But these are just some examples of features that you will find within these ResTech platforms. Um, Todd, do you want to go through a couple of these that you that you use in your company? Yeah, I think the, you know some of the vital ones for me. If we look at the first one, they're the resource management, inventory control. Um, you know, when you first start up a business, whether you're just um, you know you and your wife doing the business or whatever, um, resource management isn't such a, a big deal, right? It's uh, you're doing your own tour. You need eight people, and you know it's it's pretty much that easy. Then you start to modify that, and you add three people to your business, and then maybe it becomes five people, and then you diversify, and you have different types of uh, um, tours, right? Um, in our case, we had boats, then we went kayaks, and then we had all these different things which have different attributes to them, um, that makes the software much more difficult um, to complexity. So that was one of the triggers for us. Um, calendar and scheduling obviously is very important. Once you do get this stuff, how do you see, you know, when you talk about calendars, sometimes people just talk about calendars and seeing a calendar, but really the key once you start getting busy is seeing the availability, right? The bookings are there but it's what's left because that's really where your money and your gravy is. So um, live chat obviously um, is a big thing, but having it integrated, especially like a chat, um, you take for granted that chat is it's, there's a million different chat features out there, right? WhatsApp, uh, all different types, but to have one integrated with your, with your booking system so that um, it keeps all the messages together. So when you talk to a customer next year, you can see the previous messages so a lot of these little small things, um, and, and I think the whole key for all this is it might not, a lot of these might not make sense now, but as you grow your business, and I think that's what you want to focus on as you grow business, is it going to be suitable for you? So and we can touch on some of these a little later, I think. Yeah, so so that's that's really the key. It, 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 Todd mentioned a couple there. So I, I run Hop on a Buff Buses for us. Calendar, not even a thing. I don't care about it. We don't need it. Um, it's not something I would look for in a system. So the, the point is, we all have different needs. Absolutely. And you need to look at your company and decide which features you need and which you don't. So let's just jump into the process of choosing uh, what you need and which solution you could go for. You should go for. So what I'd first recommend is there's 150. I'm happy to, sh I think these slides will be shared afterwards. I'm happy also personally, I think Todd is as well, to share a few names of companies that are good re good to reach out for. Um, you, you probably know them because they call you every day and try and sell you, but or um, well, some of them do. Um, but I'd recommend you start out with some demos. There are, there are free demos, right? They're all, they're all in the business of sales. So they're all happy to share a demo, uh, a 30 minute or a one hour long demo of their system to show you why they've got the best system. And that's, and that's a yeah. great place to, I'm sorry, Chris, mm -hmm. a demo, just so people know, is a demo is written something you call or you send an email to those companies and that all of them are welcome to your email or, or call. So if you've never done that, or if you're maybe a smaller business and they've never reached out to you, you know, these are, these are free. It's almost done just like we're doing right now. Just wanted to make yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so reach out to a few of the, the ones that you've heard of, a few that you know people that use that use them. 
And the reason why I think it's important to start with this is because you don't always know what kind of features and which way to think about this. If you haven't had a res system before, you don't even know what, what they provide. So you, you need to get your head into that space so you know approximately the types of features that are available, the types of things that are out there, and the things you hadn't even thought of using, you didn't even know you needed until you went through those demos. So typically we do this at arrival and I say, go out there and talk to people in the networking lounge or over lunch or whatever it may be. But yeah, like Todd said, email them, um, live chat them, and they're happy to schedule a demo, especially now everyone's sitting at home. It's actually a great time to sit and get to learn these systems. So once you go through the demos, you're gonna have a, and you can do up to 10 if you want, you can just keep going on this stuff if you, if you get excited by it. But once, once you've gone through those, you're gonna have a really good idea on what types of features are available. Um, your brain might get a little bit full with, with feature overload, but then the important thing to do is to take all those types of features and, and go back to your staff. This is a tough time to say that. I absolutely understand because our staff situations today are not the same as they were a week ago or two weeks ago. So whether that's, you know, same staff or similar staff or whether it's just you sitting at home because you're a one person show, it's you, what, what's important to do is to go through every part of your company and this is called the audit internal processes. It doesn't sound very exciting at all, but this is one of those this is one of those restarts, right? We're all in this time now where, and I, I've, I've talked to so many people over the last week who mostly are actually are positive and looking out the other side of this, and and people are saying things like, "This is one of those times that you always want in business where you get to do a refresh, and you get to answer the question, what would I do differently if I started again today?'" Well, unfortunately, most of us are starting again today pretty much from scratch, and we're going to have to rebuild as we come out of this. Hey, Christian, just a quick question. Your internal processes and decide what what you need in the company and what you don't need. So, Alex, was a question? Just a, uh, yeah, just a quick question. Um, when, I'm, when I'm a small operator, and, and obviously, you know, there's a, a wide variety of operators that may be listening here today from food tours all the way to bus tours to whatnot, how do I think about um, Googling, you know, demoing three to four systems? What do I, how do I make a decision based on, you know, what my business type is? Do I just kind of generically Google, you know, reservation systems for activity providers? Or do you have any sort of um, subsector specific tips and tricks? Um, well, Magpie has a list of all of them. I think all of them. Uh, I think Arrival's got a list of all of them. I'm, I'm reluctant to sort of say, I'm, I'm, I'm reluctant to, say Google, because if you, if you Google it, you're going to get the aggressive res systems who maybe are still paying. Um, it's a good question. I think maybe we should share a list afterwards so that it's just a generic list with everyone. Um, or I suppose talk to talk to other operators in your area and see what they're using would be a good one. I mean, the, the, the slide that I put on the beginning has a lot of the bigger companies. Again, I'm, I'm reluctant. I hate to sort of, because some people aren't on that slide. Um, so let, let me let me share a list after the after the webinar. Great, thank you. Thank um, you. With everyone that we found, and I'm happy to add to that list as well. Um, so yeah, but the the, the process is, is really looking at every department. Um, your operations department, obviously, that's where most of the process is going to lie for this stuff. But it's important to talk to the operations team, uh, to the um, accounting team, the accountants especially. Uh, well, they're the most difficult in most companies because they have their systems that they've worked for the last 20 years and they're not going to shift. But you need to look at everything they do in that company. So as an example, I'm not going to mention the name of this company but because I don't think you want me to share it, but it's a company in New York and they went through this process a few years ago through switching systems. And they went through their internal audit and they spoke to the operations, the marketing, the accounting uh, drivers, tour guides, they spoke to everybody and got a list of features that they had to have. And once you speak to everyone, everyone's happy to give you a list of must-haves. And then must-haves are based on usually what they do today. So most people in the company, what they do today, they see as the only way to do something, and they must have this going forward. And if you start messing with their daily routine, they're not happy. So what this person did in New York, they went through this full list of features from every department and they went out and they reached out to these res tech companies 
and ask them for all of these features. And qu- pretty soon they started to get feedback from these companies and they started asking them, do you really need all these features? Are all these really must-haves on day one? So they revisited the process and actually went through it and decided, are these must-haves? And this is what they come up with. So now they've highlighted, and I don't even, again, don't, don't look at this list, don't read through the list, it's not important. And I don't even know which ones are the, are the must-haves versus the versus they don't need to have, but they, they eliminated about half of them. And they decided actually only half of these were must-haves. And the other half, we can live without, or we found a different way around it. <laughs> so once you've got that, and this is this should be a list, an Excel or, or a Google Doc or something in a list of features, and let your folks add to that list. And it, it doesn't matter if it starts out of a list of 100 items, which they all think they need. Make it in one big long list, and then go through and prioritize it. Uh, obviously, if it's in a spreadsheet, it's really easy just to put a column and put numbers. I always do one to 100, and you can just sort them really quickly. And you'll end up and you decide that the one to tens are the priorities, and the one to tens are the must haves in that list. Um, once you have that list, you then take that, um, sort of lock it in, and go back to those same companies or new companies and get another demo or a second follow up call. And this now is a little bit different. This is very specific. You get If you're going back to the same company, you can say, listen, we talked a couple of weeks ago. I've now got a very specific set of questions that I'd like to ask you guys on features. So you take your must-haves and you go through them one by one and you make sure that this company that you're thinking about using has that feature. It's very important that you see them show you that feature. These are salespeople. Um, I don't mind saying this because I've, I've been in sales most of my life as well, but salespeople are generally pretty good at telling you what you want to hear. You want them to show you that feature in action. And a lot of these features are not just very clean. They're not just have you got it or not. There's different ways of doing it. An availability feature is not one thing. That's a calendar and it's inventory and it's allocations. And it's all kinds of things rolled into one. So you need to see, and, Todd, and Todd's got feedback on this with the way he operates his boats, but you need to see the way that works specifically in your system. And I think you do that with the, with your pricing as a, as a big thing for you, right, Todd, with the boats? Yeah, so there was pricing, the, the um, like I said, the resources about the boats and how they move around and there are different areas at different times of the day and, you know, there's different things. So it's, a, again, a resource management um, thing. But if I can add to what you were just talking about there, um, Kristen, I was, I think originally when we talked is I, I made an Excel spreadsheet that really, really helped me with this whole thing. And it was basically taking the questions like you said. And what I started is even before I kind of did my first interview, not knowing what the software is offered, I took and thought about my entire process. Where does my lead come from? How do they contact me? So whether it was text messaging or messenger or or whatever those is, and I wrote those down as a line item on an Excel spreadsheet. Once I received the booking, how do I do it? How does it get processed? How do we follow up? How do we send out a confirmation? Um, You know, all the different steps through the thing and then put those on an Excel spreadsheet. And then I put the companies, these booking companies across the top and then basically, as I met each one of them, I just checked off the box if that person could. And then I got so complicated and I said so many because one of the things you're going to realize, I promise you, if you do this or if you take advantage of this, the very first person that you talk to, whatever company it may be, is going to sound really exciting and like it's exactly what you need. <laughs> but then you're going to do the second one. And the second one's going to be like, wow, that's really cool, right? And then the third one even does it better. And then you're going to forget what the first one really offered. So the only way to do this is keep track of it. So in this Excel spreadsheet, Mm -hmm. as Kristen said, is you organize those items as priority. And then I would take and put a a rating, not just a checkbox, but a rating of one to five. So do they have an integrated chat system? And maybe they did, but it wasn't the one I was used to using, or maybe it was a little clunky. So you rate them a three or a four. And that allows you later to go back and really evaluate your priorities versus all the companies. Yeah, that's great advice. Yeah, I like, I like the scoring there as well. I think that's a good, so you, you've got the priority of the um, feature and then you've got the score specifically for that company. That's really good. Yep. Yeah, you, 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 you will get feature overload 
when you start talking to these companies. And, and I'll be open as well about telling the company you're speaking to which other ones you're speaking to. Um, you know, that, that's, a, that's a personal choice. But th these guys are used to competing with each other. That can go either way. If you say, listen, I just spoke to company A earlier. They know how to beat up company A and they might then use the rest of the time to, to beat up on those features. But also it helps them compare. If you get a good, honest salesperson, they can help you compare that feature. So you got to sort of judge whether you want to tell them who else you're speaking to. I think the main thing to take from this is there is a next process. You may be in a situation like we all were, where we had a little black book or Excel spreadsheet and you're writing everything down and it worked and you started a business and it developed and here you are. What is that next step for you? You've got to evolve to that next phase. And it, it could be just a, a little appointment software maybe is your next phase because you're not at the level of these booking softwares. Um, who's to say only you, but there's a process here that's going to allow you to kind of work through that. Um, and you don't have to go with the biggest and the best ones right now. Yeah. Hey, uh, Christian, just a quick question from uh, one of our attendees. Um, and this is really um, hits on uh, some stuff you've already talked about, which is uh, from Michael Rizzo. And he said, basically, he, he manages bookings on Excel and he prepares his welcome letters manually in Word and sends reminders to his clients via WhatsApp. So really a collection of, of you know, kind of common office tools that he's using. His volumes are relatively low. So he said about 2,000 reservations per year. Can one software package really manage this all in a cost-effective way for an operator that's maybe not doing a ton of volume? Is, is, that, is that out there? Yeah, there's, I'd say there's solutions for everyone. There's solutions for every size company. I mean, there's, there's solutions for the, um, you know, for the Merlins of the world. I don't, I don't think they use a book in, I don't think they use one platform. You know, for, for the Merlins, you've got Madame de Swords and Legoland. And, and there's solutions to, the, we call it the, the kayak girl. Um, we used to say kayak guy, but we changed that to the kayak girl who's got two kayaks and rents them out once a month. Exactly. Um, yeah, there comes a point, there does come a point where you, if you can manage it on Excel and it's a couple of bookings a day, then maybe you don't need anything. But the other question is, are you trying to grow the business? So if you've got a small business and you think you can manage now, but you're having trouble scaling, that's really what this is all about, right? You, you, you can't scale it because you're managing half of your day managing that spreadsheet. So that's what these guys are all about. You get a booking, a rest tech platform in automates much of this process and gets you new distribution, all of a sudden now you're scaling the business and you can focus on growth rather than day-to-day -day management. So I don't think there are, there, are, there are companies that are too small and they don't want to grow and they're happy with their two kayaks and that's all they ever want to do is just rent out two kayaks a day. They probably don't need a system. But if you're looking to grow it as a business, then you need to get on board with a system. Yeah. yeah. The other side of that, I think if... The back end, um, the day to day processing in your business is holding you back. Then that's why you need to look at this. Maybe you are running it effectively on WhatsApp and Excel spreadsheet, but you don't have an adequate online booking, right? When you're out running your tours, does somebody have the access to book online? Maybe those, that's where you're losing business. Um, so you can look at this from so many different angles of why you may need it. Yeah. And I, I love software. I've, I've always, I have always I like building software. I like I like managing product of software. And we went through this process a couple of years ago for arrival. And we we spoke to 20 or 30 of these res tech companies. And there was a lady working with me in the office. She went through the demos and she said to me afterwards, she said, okay, if we were to start over, what would we do? And she was expecting me to say, oh, we just build our own because we're, because we're really good at building software. And I said, no, there's no, there's no way Right now, you should build your own. I, I can't find a reason for anyone to sit and build their own reservation system. Some people are still are still doing it. I I comment, but I don't argue with them. But th there's no reason not to go with these with one of these systems. They're they're very inexpensive. Uh, there's different methods of payment. Some you just pay on the bookings. So if you don't get the bookings, you don't have to pay. There's 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 very few cases where I think you shouldn't be looking at one of these. So that's a good point on, 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 on those different models, Christian. Uh, we have a question here from David Haynes. Um, what are your thoughts on these REST tech, platform, REST tech platforms that offer a free model um, that passes the cost onto the guest versus the platforms that pass the cost on directly to the tour operator? You want me to take that one, Christian? 
<laughs> yeah, no, I don't have to talk to Todd, but I, I, I hate this word free because it's not, it's not free, right? And some companies do say free, free, free. It's not. There's a cost, but I'll hand it off to Todd before I get wound up. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a, this, listen, this is a, uh, in a nutshell, this is a huge, huge thing, and this comes back to where you're at in your business today. There is everything out there from the word free to monthly to yearly. Every, uh, there's about front loading the customer, right? Um, there's absolutely uh, acceptable markets where you can pass on the money to the customer. There's also markets where that doesn't work, although the salespeople aren't going to tell you that. Um, at the end of the day, it's about conversion and it's about profit. And so what's the most profitable for your business and what is converting it's interesting enough about these software companies, and I'm putting them all in a bucket right now, is that they all promote very, very well. They all typically promote on the quotient of conversions. We convert better than everybody else, but there's not a single one that actually has the conversion rate posted. So because everybody's conversion is different, why an on and off bus would be totally different than what we do. It's about your sticker price. If we did a front load price where we charge the customer percentage, our bookings would drastically decrease. And I've proven that um, because you're not asking for $3 at the checkout. You're asking for 75 extra dollars. It's, it's just not a win-win. You just, I, I'll, I'll over convert them with somebody that has that every time. At the same time, if everybody in your market has the, the the load the front load to the customer at three dollars and you include it, then your bounce rate's probably going to get pretty pretty good. But if you also look at the pricing of the monthly pricing, all it takes is let's say five or six people that we're going to book that went to the checkout and they bounced. Bounce meaning they didn't convert, they didn't go all the way through and put their credit card in. If they bounce, that's your monthly payment right there. So if you had the proper system and maybe it was set up the proper way. For you and your market and your customer, um, it would pay for itself. Um, we do high volume. We've been there. We've been around for 20 years. We've earned it. I did the very first tours at the beginning. That would, would not work for we we're on a we're on a market now. We're in a plan now where we pay yearly up front. And I know exactly what my hard cost are. So I can work on my business, raise business, increase 20, 30 percent a year. My software doesn't cost me any more. So I think everybody has to find that one, the pricing schedule that suits you at this time. And then I think one of the most vital parts is there's a few of these companies that allow you to go through that process as you grow your business. So today it's free. Tomorrow you say, you know what? I, I think I'd rather pay a small monthly fee. Then it gets the monthly fee and you're doing more, but then the extra percentage is raising the cost up so much higher. Then you can go to the yearly cost. So I think it's one of those things on your checklist is, can I grow with this company? Because I can tell you one of the most difficult things you're going to do in your business is do an onboarding and offboarding of switching softwares. I've personally done it six times. It's very, very difficult um, to build the entire system, realize it doesn't work, and then move to another company. Yeah, that's that's a that's a good point. You you don't want to do this twice. You want to pick the right solution now and then stick with it for the long term. Not not forever, but for a few years. You don't want to be switching every year. Yeah, I'll, I'll just say on the on the price thing, <clears throat> there, there, there are the two models. There's the flat ish, or there's the commission, or there's the um, percentage of bookings, and then and then there's the typically six <clears> percent <throat> customer pay. So it, it it's free to you because the customer's paying a six percent fee. On your website. So my, my argument on that is if well if it was if I could charge an extra six percent and it doesn't affect my conversion, then why don't I just charge the extra six percent and put the money in my pocket or use that to pay staff or whatever else I've got to pay? So that, that that's an argument and you have to factor that in. The other side of that is that the companies that are charging six percent on your website bookings are really vested in helping you improve your website so they generally have really good tools as well to help conversion on that website but it, but it's a balance right you're, you're losing some conversion because you're charging six percent more but you've got that company really focused on that conversion so I, i'd look at it more holistically there, there is a cost to that six percent work out what it is work out what that's what that's actually going to cost you for the year compare that to some of these flat or different models and then compare the features side by side because 
it's it's the holistic picture that you need to that you need to fix. Not I, I wouldn't drill down on one little piece of it. Pricing is a really critical piece. It is the only thing you choose. It's, it, you can pay. You can you can get a free system out there if you want. That's actually free, and you'll get a first year for free, and it'll cost you fifty dollars a year after that. It probably won't be very good. Exactly. So yeah. there is a degree of you get what you pay for. If you're not paying these guys to as a subscription, they've got no money to build better systems. They've got no money for developers. So it's it's important, and you need to get the right balance on that. It's tricky. It's tricky yeah, question yeah. for pricing. So it's uh, not just a quick question, uh, just to follow up on one, one of the comments you made. Um, we actually had this question uh, come up uh, in our Q&A as well, which is you mentioned uh, changing your booking system six times. Um, why would you why would you do that? Um, was it uh, just uh, you, you, you grew, the systems changed as your needs grew or, or, or was it just evaluating different systems? How would you think about that? Yeah, the, the twist on that is exactly what you said there is that actually my needs or our company needs uh adjusted. So um, if I reflect back, um, the first one was uh, before a lot of these systems were out, we're going back 10, 12 years ago, um, it, we used an appointment software because it was really the only thing that really worked for us, the way we had to set up um, and add people to the boats and so forth. And so we went to that and obviously outgrow that. And then we moved to a booking software. And then as we, um, one of the bigger names, um, we uploaded everything. And again, we've got hundreds and hundreds of products we uploaded, but they had never dealt with anybody our size. And it was drastically slow. I mean, just miserably slow. Um, and we just could execute on it. So that moved us to another one. Another one we went through that uh, said they could do the resource management. Um, they had a patch for it. Don't worry. We got a new thing coming in the next six months. We're going to develop. I promise you, if it's not there today, don't buy the future. It needs to work right now. So um, we, we did a whole onboarding there. Um, what happened is the resource management wouldn't work. We started to over double booking the same boats. Um, became a real nightmare in a situation. So um, that's kind of how we evolved. And then we evolved um, um, to the one we have now, which is, is, is working very well for us. So it was just a need and features and benefits. Um, these things are growing exponentially um, and more and more features um, like um, the waiver, built-in waiver system. Wow, that is great. We used to do that separately and it was such a hassle. Um, so, you know, there's so many little things like that that are um, just really nice features to have. And so sometimes it, it, it makes you have to do that. So let me just jump back in um, before Alex rudely interrupted us. Um, number five is um, so you, you, you've got your um, you've got your list now. You've gone back to the to the res system, the res tech platforms, and you've gone through the secondary follow up demo. And now you've got all the results, which and you've got Todd's spreadsheet, which hopefully actually Todd, you could you could share that spreadsheet afterwards. I think we've got a copy of that. So you want to reach out? Yeah. yeah. So you've got that, whether it's on Google or Excel, you've got now then to compare it and you've got numbers next to it, which enables you to give it a score. Not that you need to use that score, but it's a good way to be objective. And now you've hopefully chosen one system. Um, once you've chosen that, I, and then again, this could involve multiple phone calls back and forth with that company just to make sure, you know, you can, you can call them back constantly and go through and, and ask more questions on exactly how a feature works and implementation times and get really specific with them. But that, once you've chosen a, a platform, implementation and timetable is critical. So. One thing you don't want to do, and we're going to cover this on the next slide on, on some of the kind of must-dos or top tips, but you want, to, you want to have process for this. Like this whole thing is a process, and that's the important part about it. You want a date that you're going to implement. It might be a month from now, a month's pushing it for any system. Um, but you want a date, whether that's in a month or three months or six months, or you decide next off-season, pick a date and then aim for that date. And you need to do this with the company. They're going to tell you how long it takes on their side to do onboarding and to move things over and to import previous bookings and move websites, whatever it may take. But you need to have a date and then and then come up with a plan back from that date. You also need to appoint people within your company, whether that's just you or other people, to implement it. It's not just, uh, hey, announce to the, to the 10 people in your company, hey, guys, we're getting a new REST system on the 1st of December. 
off we go, you know, help me out. Let's get it together. It's, it's going to be very definitive. You need go-to people and you need kind of an action plan on the steps you need to take because there are going to be steps to take. And you, you don't want to do this over a long period of time. If you decide to do this on December 1st, then, you know, things should be ramping up in October, November. You don't want to start doing things now because the transition is messy. Uh, the, the last click often is moving your website over. By the time you do that, everything needs to be in place. And that's usually sometime in the middle of the night. And the next morning you wake up and your new website's up and your new REST system's up and everything's and everything's um, ready to go. So you, you don't want this to be drawn out. You definitely don't want to go through a period of time where you've got duplicate bookings on an old system or on a new system, and you're trying to do check-ins with two different systems. That's a bit of a that's a bit of a nightmare. Um, so I've got some questions. I'm just going back to the features. What happened to our questions? Did I just flip over? There we go. So this is we've already covered some of these. This is just kind of a top tips. Um, I'm happy to mix this in with some questions, Alex. Just just jump in if you've got more specific questions but these are these are top tips which we got back from a lot of the res companies and from suppliers that we've spoken to who have been through this process um so it's it's some of the things we've already covered the the, the top one is is important to revisit every process i've, I've already mentioned that the there's, there's a couple of examples one example was from a, a res tech company and they were working with a, with a boat company i think similar to todd's and they had three departures a day. I think it was a two-hour boat tour or something like that. And they had to walk from the boat back to the main office to do check-ins where they had their, their computer and, and all the information. So the departures were 45 minutes apart because they had to walk back, they had to finish one tour, get back to the office, check people in, walk them back. And 45 minutes was approximately what that turnaround took. So they had three departures a day. They got a new ResTech platform, which had iPads, to check people in. So now the captain has an iPad at the boat. So they change the meeting point from the office to the boat. So the captain gets to kick six people off the boat, check in the next six, takes them about 10 minutes. They manage to change their whole schedule of their departures and they squeeze an extra departure in every day. So they went from three departures to four departures without any more costs. They were paying a bit more fuel for the boats. So in effect, they increased their inventory, their availability by 33% without doing anything, just by introducing an iPad at the boat. Now, if you'd have asked that captain, who is great at um, operating boats, but isn't the operations or the business person, if you'd have asked them at the start, what's a better way to do this, they wouldn't have come up with that. They're not thinking the way you're thinking as a business owner or as a manager. They're thinking, how can I be more efficient on the boat? They're thinking, let's get a new boat or a bigger engine, whatever they're thinking. But they're not thinking, how can we improve the actual process? So it's important that you look at every one of these to think of just a completely different way of running this operation. And that's significant. If you can increase the seats you've got on your vehicle by 33%, that's a whole new business right there. Mm -hmm. um, another one in the same in the same. Um, section is manual processes so the check-in was a bit of a manual process my staff as an example we get email reservations from about 150 resellers otas if i ask my what we call them front desk staff or reservation staff if i ask them a better way to run the company or, or better processes for them getting 150 200 300 emails a day with reservations is not broken that's just what they do every day. They get to work in the morning and they input reservations from an email into us into our system. That's fine, nothing broken, been doing that for years, why change it? But then you start really drilling down and you ask, is that necessary and should we be doing that and does that add value? It doesn't really add value if a computer can do that for you because computers don't make mistakes. <laughs> You'll be careful saying that, but computers make fewer mistakes. And my staff should be focused on doing something that, that adds value instead of moving information from here to here. So every single process you need to look at because every manual process has potential to bring improvement and greater efficiency. Hey, Christian, um, just a couple yeah. of questions that are more elemental, um, I think from a, a, you know, from a small operator perspective. And we have, have a couple of questions that are similar here, so I'm gonna to try to paraphrase. Um, 
which is, you know, how worth it is it to really have a reservation system if you're just getting started and your website isn't really even ranked all that uh, highly in Google right now, right? Like, so I think the premise behind the question is, is if I can't be found yet as a small operator in this wide ocean uh, that is, you know, online marketing, um, is it worth it even starting with one of these reservation systems at that point? Or do I have to kind of think about optimizing my website first to get a, get a better ranking? I'd say start now. You, 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 it's still the same process, right? It, it, assuming your operation is somewhat stable. Well, stable is a bad word to use right now, but assuming, assuming you know what kind of tours you're doing, and whether it's boats or walking tours or food tours, I'd still pick a system. Your, your rest tech system is going to help you with marketing. They're not going to do it for you necessarily. Some will, some won't. But they're going to help you, and they're going to guide you, and they're going to point to people that can help. And you, you, if they build a website as part of this, you're probably going to have a better website, which is going to be more up SEO optimized. So I'd start. I think this is a great place to start. And then, and they're there to help. These these folks want to help you grow your company. They they want you to grow your company. They want you to be a happy customer because they want you to go and tell another hundred people about this great rest tech platform. So they'll help. And if you reach out to them. Whether it's on the phone or live chat or email, that they'll they'll help as much as they can. I'm, I'm reluctant to say that a little bit because some people get some people ask squeaky wheels and will ask questions every day, and you might annoy them. But um, they they do in general want to help, and mo- a lot of these guys have got really great resources on their websites, which are nothing to do with the Res Tech platform, but just help you with your Facebook marketing or your SEO or any other part of marketing. So I'd say it's a good place to start. You all sit in an environment there where you've got similar clients on similar platforms and you can join some of these Facebook groups or what have you and start chatting to people about things that work or didn't work. And it, it's it's going to help. Having a system will help with your SEO. Uh, Chris, I add one little thing real quickly is the the P- the part that people overlook is once you go online, the, whether it's you know the booking software, you become bookable online. Even if you don't have SEO and they aren't actually going to your site, what it enables you to do now is create links to all these bookable products. One of the things that small I've seen small providers do very well is as your WhatsApp with these people or Messenger or whatever your technique is, you can send them a link during the conversation constantly. Um, like, oh, by the way, here's a link to book online. It, it drastically increases your closure rate. So for those small people out there, this is something nice. You're out on, let's use a kayak piece. That seems like the thing we've been doing. Um, but we, uh, we, you're out on a kayak with three or four people and you get an email. You could easily just forward this uh, little link. And before you get off the kayak, somebody's booked online. So that is one of the small, small uh, benefits of all these online features. And let's let's assume Google cares about, you know, there's no hard, well, Google does publish SEO guidelines, but let's assume they care about having a transaction on your site. They don't want people jumping on your site and jumping off again to a different site to book it. They, if you've got a booking platform, you know, within your website, Google cares, it makes you, gives you an extra couple of points for that SEO. So it'll make you more discoverable. And it'll also give you in, integration with with resellers who will start booking you immediately. Speaking of resellers, um, there's a there's a question here that's been posted and, and upvoted uh, uh, quite a bit, um, which is how do you value the importance of a reservation system, um, uh, whether it, you know in terms of being independent or not. So we've seen in the past couple of years um, some of the big online travel agencies acquire uh, some reservation systems. So for you guys as operators, how do you guys think about that? Is it is it good or bad, or does it matter? Yeah, we, we, we discussed this at length at, um, at on arrival in, in Berlin. Um, because we're a small group, we got to discuss this for probably too long. Um, the, the, there's, definitely two, there's definitely two schools of thought on this. There, there are two big res systems that are owned by OTAs um, that do have access. They, they say they've got the, 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 the walls up and, and they don't look at your data. They do have access to your data. What they what they do with that, I, I I don't know if I'm so worried about what they do with your data. I don't think they care that much about you, about your sales data. I think they have enough anyway on on their own platform. Um, but the, the, there has been a lot of chatter recently about 
about that being too tied in together and people being forced down a route which seems to work more for the OTA than it does for the than it does for the operator. Um, you know, on the so, plus side of that, on the plus, side, that, yeah, I'm sorry. On the on the plus side of that is that they are big and they're funded well. So in situations like this, they're probably a lot less likely to go out of business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me let, and let me just jump on that because that was mentioned. I think earlier. Well, I saw a question. I think earlier. So um, that that is a factor, right? There, there are 150 or whatever these res techs. That they're not all going to be around forever, especially now. It, it's a it's a tough time. So you also don't want to go with one that goes out of business, which has happened in the past. There's been a couple of big ones a few years ago that went out of business. So that's a benefit, and having one of these big ones that are owned by a corporate. Um, but I'd, I'd say more than that, I'd, a great way for you to see the, the strength of this of this res tech platform and to see what they're doing is to look at their releases. So a release is a, is a software update, which we're all familiar with, with, with Windows or whatever you guys use, and ask that, ask that company for a, for a list of updates that they've released in the last few months or the last year, and you want to see that they're busy. So if they're still busy doing updates and fixes and, and whatever they call it, patches, lots of different words, but you want to see that they're busy. Um, the, 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 the company that hasn't released anything in three months or six months, you might sort of look at that and think, well, you know, have they gone a bit quiet? Are they happy with what they've got and they're not really building? Are they, are they strong? Are they, are they going to be around in a year? You want someone that's busy and, and always moving. Because things do need to always move. There's always new features to release. There's always new OTAs to connect to. So you want somebody that's that's on it and ask them specifically for that list of releases. If they can't give you that, then that's a, that's a question. But you, you do want someone who's going to be around for the long term. Great. Um, we've got time for just a couple more questions. Um, we're just a, a little bit past our, our allotted time. So thanks for uh, staying the extra time, everyone. Um, one um, from Diana Flores here is, um, how do you balance, you know, your, uh, adopting these tech solutions and not losing your customer information and their journey? So she gave an example on one of the systems, you know, she gets a name, uh, an email, a phone number, and maybe, you know, an email, as I said. So how do you how do you balance that as an operator versus just you know taking your own bookings through your uh, website directly and, and getting obviously all the customer information that way? You, you should you should be getting all of it with the new system, and the new system should be importing it from the old system. I think you're referencing an OTA there because OTAs don't give you all the information. Is that is it what they're referencing? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's not much you can do with that. Um, we, we've mm-hmm personally been through that. Uh, you get as much as you can. I think um, as individual contractors or owners of our own business, um, you you have um, the ability to do all that once you take that client. I think that's one of your responsibilities as, as that customer uh, uses your service that you make sure you acquire all that information while they're with you. Yeah, you're not going to get more information for, as, as ben said the other day they're not gonna they're not gonna hand you the customer email all right guys um well we're just uh at 50 minutes here so i'd like to uh really thank you both for uh, some really excellent information for operators um i think they're uh, we went through a lot of comprehensive information thanks for listening to the torpreneur podcast be sure to visit torpreneur.com to join the conversation and access the show notes including links to the resources mentioned on today's episode this is torpreneur